Hey guys, I'm starting out a new financial channel with my co-host Michael Santanato. His channel is called Be Fire Become Financially Indestructible. And we're trying to get his new channel up to a thousand subscribers, so if you guys could go down there, the link is down below in the description. Also, the content's going to be released on his channel about two to three weeks before it gets released on mine. Before we get started, first a word from today's sponsor, The Family Law Project. It's similar to RateMDs.com, and if you've been to a corrupt family court or woke school, you can now report terrible judges, teachers, caseworkers, and therapists on the Family Law Accountability Project. It helps you figure out which lawyers and educational institutions to avoid too. And by leaving a review, you help others having their academic or financial life wrecked by wokesters. What are you waiting for? Sponsor link is down below. What's up, everybody? Michael Santanato here. How to become financially indestructible. The most important topic today. How to buy or how not to buy Bitcoin with the one and only Sandman. Sandman, let's do it. All right. How's it going? It's going awesome, man. I'm buying these dips. You're buying the dips? <laughs> I'm buying the dips always, baby. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, in terms of topics, I thought it was important to kind of talk to people about when to buy and when not to buy like sure we we're kind of experiencing dips from time to time but this time around the run we've only seen dips of maybe 15 16 17 percent max whereas normally we would see dips of like 30 to 40 percent so mm -hmm. it, like the whole market is behaving less like rationally than us usual and there's a lot less volatility so it's kind of hard to know if you're buying the dips too soon because you're not seeing the the 30 40 percent drops and i think they're coming at some point you know in, in the next year or two we're going to start to see those massive drops but those are healthy i agree yeah so i agree i agree it's an emotional thing i remember being you know okay so i've been in bitcoin for um 2017 and i remember the first like three four years my emotions going in the toilet when these huge dips would happen 30 40 50 percent right and it took me a while and it took me learning trading and technical analysis and charts and studying up from other people that these dips are healthy and those corrections are healthy and they're even necessary you know yeah you got to you got to flush out, stronger you got to flush out all the leverage holders yeah flush weak hands um and then it allows it builds strength it builds support you know it's like when you it's like when you get a bug in your stomach and and you feel like shit for like you know three days but then your digestive system is stronger and you feel better after and you're like oh my god i haven't felt this good in forever and then you can eat anything and you're you're stronger you know yeah it's like your financial immune system yes Ooh, that's a freaking great topic that's gonna be a future video right there your financial <laughs> immune system <laughs> well, hitting all the keywords or something <laughs> we need it because because and i'm telling you like I, I needed those lessons because it made me stronger as an investor i needed those punches those knockdowns and beatdowns and i needed the the market maker to really mess with me because it made me convicted for the longer term right so i don't i don't mind buying a 15 percent dip because yeah there's going to be a 30 percent dip down the corner but if i'm in it for five years 10 years then i'm still going to be laughing no matter what yeah, it's for me, what's really interesting is like a lot of people tell me it's a scam. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, I had a couple of people tell me there's, it's a scam. And then when it hit all time new highs, they're contacting me and saying, like, how do I buy this? Right. Like, how do I? And, and this is this is kind of the reason I wanted to cover this topic, because I get a lot of people. They don't know how to buy it. Like they, they get scared of the ETF because they they're told you don't own it if you if you buy it in an ETF. And then yeah. they also get like you tell them about ledgers and they're like i don't know what this is like this is confusing like is yeah. my is like what it does they don't understand that it's just a password on a on a thumb drive they they yep. think they think it's a wallet that holds something magical you know but but they don't understand that it's just a part of the ledger and so you know, I, that's why i kind of want to educate people and inform them on this so the three ways that i kind of learned to buy was to have some on an exchange and then, you know, trade it on an exchange back and forth with other currencies and, you know, like DAI and stable coins to kind mm -hmm. of protect myself. But the problem with that mm -hmm. is if you're trading all the time, every single trade is considered the way you would trade an equity. So you mm -hmm. have to report everything on taxes. 
So even if you're like, mm-hmm. oh, somebody sent me ten dollars in Bitcoin, oh, that's considered, you know, like income. But then if I sell that t- five dollars and ten, that's considered like a capital gain or a capital loss. So yeah. it becomes a little bit more complicated. So that's why I don't trade too much anymore. But then if you want to trade in a in a tax deferred or a tax free account, that's where ETFs make sense. You know, so people say, oh, yeah. it's, if you don't own, if you own the ETF, you know, they'll confiscate it. For, I'm like, look, the ETF, uh, a, an ETF allows me to buy it and not pay any tax. Why wouldn't I take advantage yeah. of this? Mm-hmm. It, it, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. And they're like, well, you, well, look, I have more than half of it outside of a tax-free savings account, but the rest I can put in a tax-free savings account. Like, you know, you can diversify yes. it, right? That's perfectly okay. That's right. Yeah, and, that's very astute. That's a very good point. It makes sense to have it in a TFSA or an RSP, depending on your tax situation, your overall financial uh, tax situation, so that you can leverage those tax benefits. That's very wise. And then also, if you're buying the ETFs, like in Canada, we have ETFs that are absolutely terrible because they're ch- some of them, like like the uh, 3IQ ETF or Bitcoin Trust, they were charging like 1.5% to 2% management annual management fees. So mm-hmm. like after four years, you've lost 10% of your Bitcoin. So mm-hmm. you want to really study the management fees and management structure of each um, like ETF that you get involved with. Like Grayscale now, they've lost 45% of their uh, Bitcoin holdings in the last two months because people are not willing to pay one and a half percent. They're going to other ETFs. They're only charging them like 0.3% or 0.4%. Yeah. And it made sense too that distribution that occurred once the ETFs did open up. It really made sense. Like it, it let the investors who bought Grayscale privately before it was public a long time ago and it let them sell and take profits. But watching the movement of the ETFs and the holdings decrease on Grayscale and then also increase on all the others, which was super interesting because you you kind of needed that distribution. But you're right that, you know, 3IQ in Canada, they were the first to market they were the first etf way before america so they they were able to set the price for their fees well yeah when you had no option you had to pay the two yes. percent but now when you have That's the option right. like now I, I don't own three iq anymore now i've got uh the canadian ones like ci uh ci galaxy so ci mm-hmm. uh is the largest asset manager in canada and mm-hmm. they basically set it set things up with galaxy i think it's no, mike novogratz so they've they've got something going on there and they've got the lowest fee structure in canada so unless you want to convert your canadian dollars to u.s dollars and then buy something like ibit or the fidelity one uh mm-hmm. like if you want to keep it in canadian dollars then it makes sense to do that but yeah. if it, like if you have u.s dollars you know, like i've got some grayscale like bitcoin trust shares and that's with you as dollars, and that's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. But I'm not gonna, you know. I I also have to look at each um, each fund. Like I won't just buy one of them. I'll buy like the Fidelity in Canada. I'll buy the like CI Galaxy. I'll buy uh, like the, the Ibit BlackRock, because what I'm doing is I'm trying to like distribute the risk. Because a lot of them use Coinbase as their custodian. So what you want to do is you want right. to find out like which ones have like our self custodians, which ones use Coinbase. I mean, I'm sure nothing's going to happen with the, with the BlackRock, but still you want to kind of spread your risk around a little bit. Yeah, that's very wise. Um, so when is talking about spreading risk, you know, when is the best and worst time to buy? <laughs> well, the, the, okay. So Bitcoin kind of has phases. So phase one or phase zero is kind of when the market is down in the bottom. So, right. you know, the first time I bought any substantial amount of Bitcoin was when it was around 10,000 after the 2017 run. And, mm-hmm. you, you know, I, I, I was like, okay, well, it's low. And I, and I was, I was panic buying between 10,000 and 15,000. And we hadn't even gotten, you know, to the all time highs or anything because you, you, you know, you, know, you want to be greedy when others are fearful or you want to be greedy when everyone's yeah. clueless and they don't know what the hell's going on. Or yeah, when and you're right, Buffett. Buffett's quote: "You're totally right. Be fearful when others are greedy, and be greedy when others are fearful." But I'd, I'd go further. I'd say be greedy when others are indifferent, when they don't care about an asset. 
right? Because they or yeah. they, they forget about it. They're like, oh, that thing over there. Yeah, I don't really care. Yeah. When it's boring. Yeah. When assets are boring and they don't go up and down very much, when they're not volatile, that's the best yeah. time to buy. Yes, when it's boring, exactly. Charlie Munger, I love that we're talking the old fogies and the old <laughs> wise men, Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett. Charlie Munger said, the money is made in the weight. The money's not made on the buy or the sell. It's made in the weight. Yeah. That's the case with Bitcoin. Yeah. It's a mathematical. I love these freaking dim-witted dumb people that say it's tulips. You know, there was a, there was a guy just a couple of years ago talking, trying to convince me it was tulips. I'm like, dude, I've been in this thing since 2017. I've read the white paper like eight times. You're nuts. You're you're dumb. You're retarded. It's well, just a matter the tulips, of time before smart tulip, money the, comes in. The tulip bubble happened, and then it never reinflated. And so there was uh, Tika Tawari uh, was doing this chat on London Real. And this is something I was listening to in about 2019, 2020. And he said, mm -hmm. bubbles burst, like Ponzi scheme bubbles burst, like the tulip mania. And they never come back. And then he said, mm -hmm. this keeps bursting and then coming back many times over. Mm -hmm. exactly. And so that is telling you that it's something different. Yeah. And then and then on exactly. top of that, you get the stock to flow. You get the the amount of the individual commodity, in this case, Bitcoin, drops. So that inc well, even if the s supply drops, but the demand stays the same, you get price spikes so having yeah. is almost here like that's pretty much baked into the cake even if the people yeah, only yeah, the yeah. diehards that have been buying up to now continue to buy the the, the demand will double and that's going to drive price higher yeah yeah, it's a matter of supply and demand. I love what, I love just the fact that Bitcoin will be always successful because of supply and demand. You know what I mean? The basic basic metrics of eco ec economics and pricing is based on supply and demand. You just need to do a little bit of math <laughs> to well, figure out that you know Bitcoin's declining supply and the limited supply and the inability to make it unlimited. Well, it's make it fine. It's the only asset in the history of the world for the for the most part that's a finite asset exactly so it, you could there are finite assets like you know if you want to buy a van gogh painting there's only so many of them mm -hmm. right or, and or that's Picasso. Why art, you're yeah you're exactly right that's why art keeps going up in value art continually 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 goes up in value like a freaking um mona lisa or any picasso or any van gogh is not going to go down in price no you know because I mean? it's finite it's in supply actually, yeah yeah, it, it's actually a uh, asset class that in recessions and in times of economic despair still continue to rise no matter what. Yeah, and there's actually uh, a couple companies out there. What they do is they allow you to buy a percentage of a famous artist painting. So what they'll do is they'll go out. Yeah. And, did you hear about them or no? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Like say, say they go out and they buy a Picasso. So they'll put the Picasso yeah. and then they'll put it on their website and they'll say... Like you can buy a percentage of the Picasso and then you can, yes. you know, you, you don't have to buy the $20 million painting, but you can buy $50,000 worth of it. And you can continue to yes. enjoy the appreciation of that asset. And, and you can, you can come in and out of that asset class as the price, you know, comes up and down. That's right. And, uh, it was crypto. It was a blockchain that created this ability to do this, I believe. There was something on the blockchain. I was looking into this about a year or two ago. I was going to get into it, I think, but I didn't. <laughs> well, it's, it's do, good. Yeah, go ahead. I do want to say that I actually have an online course to help people get into Bitcoin and help them understand everything they need to know. And, you know, if the audience wants, we'll, we'll have that link in the description. Okay. Yeah. Like I like we're basically have both of our coaching links in the description so people can check it out. Yes. So. Yes, love it. So you're helping people right now buy and sell or just buy? Well, gold. it's it's hilarious because I had like three or four people um, show up right at the highs. And then mm. as the price corrected 10, 15%, they all disappeared. <laughs> it's oh just, my God. Like they're just, I'm like, so where did you go? Funny. And, you know, and, and it's like, we've, we've gone straight up. And then, you know, yeah. I, I, some people like my, like my mother, for example, uh, she ended up selling all of her ETF liquidated no it all yeah like sixty three, sixty four thousand. 
Wow. Good for her for even getting into it. Your mom, that's awesome. Well, look, it's like uh, I, I, I'm a good salesman, right? I used to be a, a former financial <laughs> advisor, right? So it's kind of like it's an easy sell. And I'm not getting a commission yeah. either. So it's like, well, what incentive do I have? Right. But anyway, I'm just saying, um, you know, she got in, but, you know, she went, she, when it was up to like the first time she bought it, she was buying it around 25, 30. And it went up to 65 and then it went back down. And then she was like emotionally, like distraught because of that mm. and mm -hmm. so she ended up selling under 30 and then buying back in like over 35 right mm -hmm. and so you know this time around she's like i'm taking profits like i'm taking the profits at 65 because last time i was here i didn't take profits and yeah i hate myself for it oh mom <laughs> <laughs> Don't hate yourself, mom. No. Yeah, but, but this... smart on her. Smart on her. You know, like let's 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 end with this. You mentioned you get the Bitcoin price you deserve. You told me that before. You get the Bitcoin price you deserve. Mom is not outside of that. So talk about that. What does that mean? Well, it has to do with critics, right? So at one time when people were handing me free Bitcoin at three hundred dollar Bitcoin, and I was like, "What the hell is this? I don't want this," right? Like. I was just cash it in and get money for it. Or I would just like leave it alone. I wouldn't touch it. Um, so getting it at the price you deserve buy, is when you understand it, when you say, okay, now I understand why this is valuable because I've done the homework. I've done the research to figure it out. And so mm -hmm. what happens is like a lot of us are very anti Bitcoin until something we happens. Well, yeah, we <laughs> either see it, it protects you from inflation. Like I needed it when, my channel was demonetized and I needed to figure out another way to make money because I wasn't getting YouTube revenue. So right. I started making money off of cryptocurrencies, promoting the brave browser and getting paid in mm -hmm. basic attention token. Mm -hmm. And so then I decided, okay, I'm going to put a couple Bitcoin over here just to kind of enjoy the next run and make a little bit of money. And then mm -hmm. I, and then as I did that, I was invested and then I I started doing more research because, and as I did more research, I realized, wait a minute, like, this is something, this is really important. Yes. And I, I didn't understand what I have. And like the story about mom selling the Bitcoin is like people who had Google, when I, I was going to buy Google in the IPO. I chickened out. I didn't do it. But I probably would have doubled or tripled my money and then I would have sold all of it. And I would have thought I was like a hero and a king. And right. then it would have gone up like 100x. And I would have been like, why did I sell it? Or like... People who bought yeah. <laughs> Amazon early and then they sold it a couple years after it did a massive right. run. And they're like, yes, yeah. I made all this. It's like, no, you want assets. Like you get the whole Warren Buffett philosophy where you buy assets that are good and that you mm -hmm. understand and they keep going up forever mm -hmm. or as close to forever as possible. Right. So, you know, you, you, what you want to wow. do. <laughs> wow. What? Yeah. I'm just getting that. Like if you understand the business, and you can hold it forever. Like if you really see what Google was doing or where it was going or uh, same thing with Amazon, you know, like it, it's, it's amazing because it reminds me of people who sold Bitcoin at a hundred bucks. Right. And they were like, Oh my God. Cause they bought it for like five cents. They're like, Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. And now here we are, here we are, you know, 65,000 USD, you yeah. know, and it's just like you just the depth of vision. I think a mentor of mine taught me about depth of vision. And uh, even me, I've sold Bitcoin too early and, and I've sold it at the wrong times. And I've, I've thankfully still got some I've never sold from 2017. But the depth of vision, man, how far can you see? How far can it's, we see? I think it's the word you're looking for is conviction, right? Like how convicted are you of the belief system that you that this is going to keep going up? And like you have to look at the conviction rate of people who hold Bitcoin is much higher than almost any other asset class. Yeah, it's true. And That's because true. it's it's not just an asset, it's it's an F you to the system, an F you to the boomers. They're just saying yeah. like, you know what? If I have to be poor and I lose everything in this, then I'm going to die on this on this hill rather than like watch you like take everything from me. Yeah. That's amazing, man. That's a religion. That's, yeah. That's like religious, you know, that's intense. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I love it. All right, man. I think we're good. How not to buy Bitcoin, how to buy Bitcoin. All right, man.
Talk to you later. Thank you. Well, that's it. If you want these videos two weeks before I release them here, then check out the Financially Indestructible channel in the description. It's right near the top. If you have any finance-related topics that you want us to cover, then please leave them in the description. Michael and I both do coaching, and you can reach us through the links below too. Anyways, enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.